Capricorn, Capricorn Rising, and of course all of you Capricorn Moon people out there, this is your weekly astrological and card horoscope for the week starting February 24th, 2020. Just a quick reminder for everybody out there, if you ever wish to get a session with me, you do need to go to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com, or of course you may also just simply follow the links below. And I do want to let everyone know ahead of time the guy upstairs is moving out, and so you may hear some bumps or some doors shutting and whatnot. It's a little bit noisy. Uh, it was noisier yesterday when I was doing other horoscopes, but just in case, I wanted to let you know ahead of time, so bear with us. So what is going on when it comes to your astrology over the course of this coming week? Well, on Tuesday, we've actually got Mercury, the planet of communications, haste and speed, currently retrograde in a conjunction with the sun. All of this action is taking place in your third house of communications, pacts, promises, commitments, your peer group and contracts. And when we have Mercury retrograde conjunct the sun, there is a highlight moment going on that brings an opportunity for rectifying or redrafting, revising, and correcting something that is going on in an ongoing commitment or possibly an ongoing project or collaboration that you are a part of. This can also indicate a rectification of a service that you are receiving at this point in time, possibly something relating to a job or a publishing project or maybe even an existing contract that you are in. Now, Mercury retrograde can be a frustrating thing to deal with in the third house because it seems like nothing is making sense, it's a bit confusing, but remember, sometimes it's not a good idea to just affirm that and make something negative happen over and over and over again because when Mercury retrograde is conjunct the Sun, we have a chance to completely do a rewrite of an existing agreement within either our peer group or a service that we have or some kind of, again, big collaborative project or publishing project. In fact, with Mercury Retrograde conjunct the Sun, a lot of you who may feel that maybe an existing plan, even if it's something that you're locked into, whether it's an independent contractor job or some kind of paper, uh, you know, some kind of paper pushing endeavor or maybe even a hired service or even like a lease or something like that, are getting a chance to actually go and correct something that you've been simply just living with or maybe there's something about this agreement or something about this collaboration or this peer group effort that is not holding up very well. With Mercury Retrograde conjunct the Sun, you're not the only one who has this feeling. You are thankfully not the only one who is aware of what's going on because the highlight of the Sun is finally making other people see what's going on. People are going to be willing to collaborate and hear you out, even if they were turning a blind eye before, or perhaps they just didn't notice the way that you had. The good news is, with that power of rectification and alteration here, we have a chance to turn something that we've been stuck with into something completely different. As we get to Friday, well, we've got Venus, the planet of love, affection, harmony, and the finer things in life in your fourth house of home and family, Aries, forming a square to Pluto currently in your sign. And it looks like there could be some frustrations over uh, something that is intended to be good, but it does not feel very good. And this can often show up where possibly a gesture or an action taken by another is actually almost running contrary to either a boundary or a rule or a goal that we are working with. It, it almost feels like a disrespectful kindness. And that's a weird thing to say that almost sounds oxymoronic. But remember, if people are doing the best they can or their intentions are in the right place, then it's not intended to be something taken as an act of violence. But with Venus square to Pluto, there could be something going on as it relates to a family member or a household situation where something that is done either for you or the household, or maybe um, if you have a household business or something like that, something that is done for that is ultimately going to be maybe actually going against the rules, the values, the bylaws, or maybe even feeling almost a bit more like a power play, something that is actually upsetting the balance, even though it is an overwhelmingly positive gesture. 
In a lot of cases with a square, we can still have our cake and eat it too. Remember, squares have cures. Don't just let something negative happen because it appears that way on the surface. What you see is never what you always get. You never see the whole picture uh, with just your physical eyeballs, right? So it's important to move beyond just that. But I feel like with Venus squared to Pluto, it could feel like somebody is trying to maybe push something in a direction that is contrary or maybe, um, yeah, let's just say contrary to your values or contrary to your hopes or desires or even rules and boundaries that you've set up for yourself, your home, or maybe your family with a kind gesture, with something generous, with some, something loving. Make sure that we can find a way to make everything work in the best interest of all concerned, but don't suddenly be surprised if whatever is happening seems like a huge breach, and we are going to need to, of course, explain what is wrong with this picture, but at least understand where everyone's truly coming from. So before we get on to the cards, it does look like we've got uh, some announcements to share, all right? We always do announcements now in the middle. Those of you who are interested in the Patreon monthly horoscopes, your monthlies will be up here on Sunday, the 23rd of February. And if you are interested in talks about soulmates, twin flames, soul family, and oversoul groups, why don't you uh, hike on over to my main channel page. I've actually got that on the main channel page as a featured video. Or, of course, you can always go to the deep doc deep topics playlist or you can open up the down bar beneath this video and check it out there and follow the links so what is going on when it comes to your cards well for your spiritual themes we actually have the three of swords upright and i feel like this week it's it's one of those weeks where i think this i don't feel like this is you but I do feel like the uh, it's going to feel almost impossible sometimes to make a decision or make a commitment without accidentally challenging or betraying uh, the feelings or expectations of another person. And with the Three of Swords upright, a lot of it has to do with maybe some growing pains that people are not stepping into very well. Because one of the things that's kind of coming through is that we are betraying expectations. We are betraying projections that are being thrown upon us. And that can espouse feelings of betrayal or feelings of abandonment or rejection in other people. But as we look at the astrology, we are doing a lot of corrective work as well. Correcting misunderstandings, correcting and rectifying commitments and contracts and agreements that are not going anywhere, they're not good for us anymore, the bylaws of a certain plan, project, or group are just not actually going to be an at, you know, going to be adequate for success for all concerned. And if some people are perfectly happy with that, they are going to, of course, take exception, or hopefully not, but sometimes they might take it personally when somebody decides to raise a hand and, you know, maybe bring emotion to change things. This might not be something you can avoid. All right, it's not. Sometimes it's not serving anybody to sugarcoat everything, to make everything all, you know, puppy dogs, ice cream, and gumdrops all the time. It's, that's not necessarily something that's going to help somebody grow or help a situation that is already on its way in the wrong direction get back on the right road. And with the Three of Swords, just be careful this week, Capricorn. You may step on a few toes, but as long as you say sorry and explain what is going on and how we can actually turn things in the highest interest of all concerned, it will be okay. As we get to the influx, we have the Page of Wands in reverse. And a lot of you are going, going to be feeling it this week that you almost want to put the brakes on maybe, again, a project or maybe some things that are going forward that are all of a sudden not feeling like the great, wonderful ideas they were before. Honeymoon is over. Or maybe just the adrenaline, dopamine rush of beginning something new has come back down to maybe a balanced normal. And we're thinking a little bit more clearly, and we're realizing that, no, it's probably not in our best interest to just sort of keep things going so, you know, so much in, uh, in such a way that you might be thinking that you have to 
just kind of let things, let the chips fall where they will. Because I'm looking at the Page of Wands reversed and I'm f seeing a lot of you actually saving the day by actually holding your horses. And this could be something that feels, right, a little bit like a naysayer move. It might feel like something another person would take as sort of being a Debbie Downer or a doubter. But as we get to the outflux of the world card upright, a lot of stuff that maybe could have taken care of itself before that was self-contained and self-maintained is growing out of that phase. And sometimes, yeah, certain projects, certain connections, certain relationships, certain jobs evolve and they grow in a very positive way, but they do require more maintenance and time and care. And so I feel like this week, a lot of you Capricorn people are going to have to be the Capricorn in the group and start advocating for a little bit more hands-on responsibility and perhaps even course corrections where other people might not be feeling like they can or maybe feel like there's it's necessary just yet to do so. But I feel like you are doing a lot of unpopular day-saving work. As we get down to the bottom row with your mundane concerns, we have for your material wealth the Strength card in reverse. And overall, whether you get the Strength card upright or reversed, it is still positive for your wealth. It is still something that is actually bringing in some good opportunities for liquidity and abundance. But I am feeling with the strength card reversed, there is a feeling of being overwhelmed or maybe even feeling like all candles are being burned at once at both ends. A lot of this, I feel, comes back to something that maybe was not implemented correctly, maybe in its plan, its inception, whether it's a job idea, or maybe how we kind of integrate you into a new role or maybe a financial opportunity is not it's it's almost happening with too many big picture thinkers people who don't necessarily know how to explain or put into words what their ideals are something has not planned itself out correctly it makes me think of the three little pigs right you know where are we in the straw house are we in the stick house we're certainly not in the brick house yet and I feel like a lot of this is going to require, right, that course correction, that rectifying of agreements and maybe plans that were maybe slapped together a little bit too flimsily. It is something that you can survive, though, right? Just don't be afraid of being the one to call it out. And I think that ultimately, at the end of the day, there will be some peace returning to the workspace after that or the financial space after that. As we get to the external, what's going on maybe with your friends and your relatives and the other people in your life, we've got the Four of Swords in reverse. And I am seeing some volatility with this, just because the with the World card reversed and the Page of Wands reversed and the Three of Swords all kind of, you know, beaming out at the same time, I'm kind of feeling like the Four of Swords reversed is talking about somebody who is ultimately not sure if they're happy with you or not happy with you right now. And you've got to know when to draw a boundary with that. There is no good reason for you to sit back and just let yourself be um, the, the, you know, the ear and the appreciated friend one minute and then the punching bag and the receptacle for the negative energy the next minute because that's what volatility is. And I'm kind of feeling with the Four of Swords reverse, it's almost like this, this friendship or this connection is really up and down overnight. It's almost like um, it, 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 the, the quality of the exchange or the connection is really dependent on mood swings. And of course, that's no way to conduct any kind of relationship or any kind of connection. And this week, I feel maybe that act of, quote, betrayal or rejection or judgment that is really not so, but maybe just a painful truth with that Three of Swords could be needing to correct something that has become an uncomfortable normal. Maybe this has been allowed to fly for way too long. When it comes to your relationships, when it comes to love, when it comes to romance and other people, we have the tower upright. And... It's weird. I'm kind of seeing that there's something is happening at breakneck speed for you in a way where it is really kind of upsetting. When I say upsetting, I don't mean like devastating. I mean, it's just upsetting the balance 
of your life in terms of how you are organizing yourself. Sometimes this can be positive, right? We talk about maybe a windfall coming in, a partner getting a promotion or a new job, and all of a sudden everything's changing, but it's changing rapidly to accommodate something new and positive. Sometimes this can happen when maybe somebody new is coming into our space and they're a really good match and they can also uh, find a home in other areas of our lives as well. But there is a disruption that I feel with the tower card upright is ultimately necessary. There is a transition that maybe as, uh, as a couple or maybe, again, if you're available and this is somebody new, that we have been resisting. And ultimately, that transition is now being made to happen. Uh, I guess you could say by forces that are maybe working more in your favor, even though they may be unseen. Because the Tower card upright, I, I mentioned this to another sign this week, the Tower card upright shows up when we don't honor the transition marker of the Death card, right? Because the Death card is the end we see coming. The tower is the thing that we fortify when we don't want to let it go, even though it should go. And this could be the end of maybe an on-again, off-again kind of situation because of the influx of a new love chapter in your life, or possibly something drastic uh, being required for you and a partner or somebody you and you and maybe somebody new have to do in order to accommodate a better quality of life or even a new chapter in your life together. But whatever this is, uh, I do feel like even on a partner's level, it's going to be very disruptive for them. There could sometimes also be a bit of a shock coming to a partner or somebody new outside of the relationship, probably something going on with family that, uh, or, or I'm seeing family or even work, where it is in a weird way pulling us closer together, but it's under chaotic circumstances, all right? And it's important to know how to ride these waves. So I hope you found this helpful, Capricorn. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Y'all know I appreciate it. And uh, should you ever wish to get a session with me, just go on ahead to my website. It's integrativemysticism.com.